Hi, everybody. Today we have the story of the two great mountaintop events, the Ascension and the Great Commission. We hear of the maturation of the disciples into apostles who go out to all nations. And that's a pattern that we are also called to follow as baptized Christians. How many people in the world profess or believe in the ascension of Jesus into heaven? Well, it's about 4.2 billion people in the world. And there's only 2.3 million, a billion Christians in the world. So what are the other 1.9 billion? The Muslims. Today's also the, day, the last day of Ramadan. So I thought it fitting to speak a little bit, uh, to include a little bit about a visit I made to the site of the Ascension, which is currently a mosque, a Muslim site. When I was on pilgrimage in Jerusalem, we visited to that spot, and it's a place that Christians have, uh, and Muslims have, believed that Jesus ascended into heaven uh, ever since the time of Constantine. So, quite some time. Now you go there, and there's a Muslim gentleman who will will greet you and welcome you in, and, and you'll see that, yeah, this little tiny church made of stone, not really a church anymore, but is set up as a, a Muslim mosque, a prayer, a prayer site. Now, they believe that Jesus rose from, the, from this spot into heaven, but not in quite the same way as we do, and I'll get to that. So I went there, we're, we're at the, this very stone where Jesus would have stood, that we believe that he stood, um, that marks the spot. And I was praying there, and a group of four, uh, four people came in, two men and two women, to pray as well, and they're Muslim. And so for some time, we were, we were sitting there and kneeling there. I was right by the stone, uh, kneeling and praying. And it was a really special moment to think, wow, I'm Christian, you know, I recognize this spot. They're Muslims. They recognize this event as well. And we're all praying to God. It was quite a powerful moment. And then one of them asked me a question. He said, excuse me, is this a spot where Jesus was crucified? Well, I said, well, no, it wasn't. Uh, It's not the spot. This is where he ascended from earth to heaven. He said, oh, oh, right, right, yeah. So we Muslims, we believe that he did too. But, well, where was he crucified? He asked me. I said, we're on top of the the mountain, right? So the Mount of Olives. So I'm looking down. uh, Yeah, right down there about in Jerusalem. You see that church there. There's In there, there's a spot where Jesus was crucified. He said, oh, okay. Well, then how did he get up here? Well, I said, he rose from the dead. Ah. See, this is a big difference between our beliefs. How did Jesus get to the top of this mountain after being crucified and dying? Well, he had to rise from the dead and then walk up there, right? (laughs) And he said, well, I too believe, you know, not many Muslims believe that Jesus was crucified, but I too believe that he he was crucified. Um, But it was more of a a spiritual uh, ascension then. Uh, He didn't, uh, there's a spiritual existence of Jesus after the crucifixion not a bodily resurrection, as we believe. You see, the issue or the belief in the crucifixion, the death and resurrection of Jesus, is rejected by most Muslims. But similar to Christians, that we have a great common point to discuss is the ascension and that Jesus will return before the end of time. Now, Muslims think that they'll come, he'll come with Muhammad. However, Um, it's a pretty neat thing to think that we, along with all these other people, have this common point. In the Quran, it said that Allah raised him up into himself, unto himself. That's, that's what they, uh, where they get that from. So one interpretation then is that Jesus was in the upper room with his disciples and ascended to God from there. And then someone else came out of the upper room and the Jews thought he looked like Jesus and took him, and that's who they crucified. Some people say that maybe that was Judas that they took, transformed in appearance a bit. Or others say that one disciple volunteered to take the place of Jesus. Others say 
that there was a crucifixion, but it was only an illusion. In reality, Jesus could not die, but ascended spiritually from the cross into heaven. And a small group say that Jesus never ascended, but died a natural death after fleeing to India. Okay, the point is that the ascension is an event widely held to be true. However, there's this great gap with regards to its meaning, a gap that really points to what it means to be Christian in the first place. For the Christian, the bodily ascension of Jesus shows the great dignity of the human, of the Christian baptized who shares in the very life and mission of God. So now let us turn to the other mountaintop event in our gospel for today, in Galilee. This mountain was probably Mount Arbel, which overlooks the, the Sea of Galilee and the city of Tiberias. And only Matthew includes the story in his gospel. And time-wise, it probably falls uh, slightly before the ascension, right? They would have had gone back down to Jerusalem after that. Yet his message is really part and parcel with the ascension. At the end of today's gospel, Jesus says, I am with you always. Right? Behold, I am with you always until the end of the age. I was really stuck on the words with you. Now, what does that mean, with you? The Greek uh, and the Hebrew equivalents to the Greek and the Septuagint have other words uh, that can be translated. It can be translated in other ways. With you could be translated by you, among you, in you, beside you, behind you. Does that sound familiar? To me, that sounds like a lot like St. Patrick's breastplate, the, the hymn uh, to God written by St. Patrick. Right? Christ within me, Christ before me, behind me, Christ beneath me, above me. Right? That's just a little snippet of that whole prayer. But, but it really does sound familiar. Christ is with us. Jesus, again, is revealing that he is Emmanuel, God with us. He said, I am, which is the name of God, with you. Right? And elsewhere, he promises to be present wherever two or three are gathered. Wherever the church is present, there is Jesus. So with you, meta humes in Greek, must be understood in light of the first parts of Jesus's speech to them in the Great Commission. It says, all power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Again, here's a big difference between Christian belief and our Muslim friends. We both believe in God's omnipotence and omnipresence, but with Jesus, it is different. For Jesus is God and has divine authority, right? Therefore, his presence is much greater than what you see, and he's not merely a messenger of God, right? He is God. He's not an angel or a prophet. Jesus is divine. This means that a command such as, go therefore and make disciples, is a command coming from God himself. With the assurance, however, that he will work through us with that same authority. Go make disciples, teaching them to observe all that I commanded you. So this is evangelization the very mission of the church. Yet the mission and the promise that Jesus makes to us in this gospel are tied together. One cannot claim the promise of Christ's ongoing presence and then ignore the mission. Go make disciples. I will be with you. I will be with you in what? In the mission. So as Jesus ascended, it was clear for the disciples that they were now the hands and the feet and the mouth of Christ, the very body of the church, who, as St. Paul says, fills all things in every way. As I said in the beginning, this great commission, followed by the ascension, together show the maturation of the disciples. 
Throughout the gospel, they pass through the discipleship stages of initial trust, curiosity, openness, seeking spiritually, and then finally intentional discipleship. And from that, they've been sent, moved on, out to the nations as apostles, commissioned to bring others to Christ. So maybe take a moment on this day of this great solemnity of the Ascension to consider your own journey of discipleship at Ascension Parish in your life. You know, when did you first trust God? Is Jesus the Lord of your life? Who calls himself or herself Christian because of your involvement? You know, how is Jesus who sits at the very right hand of the Father, how has Jesus worked through you? And where is he sending you, right? To whom is he calling you to reach out to? It's very difficult to imagine ourselves as apostles in this time of COVID-19, but the reality is still there, right? We are Christians and our identity And God's presence with us is tied to our mission to bring all nations into one in Christ. So go, be not afraid. For Jesus, God himself, told us so and is with us. May God bless you.